All right, hello and good morning. Once again, we're going to continue looking at the second section of the syllabus, which is crop production. The last time we looked at physiological processes. We looked at processes like photosynthesis, transpiration, translocation, photoperiodism, and so forth. So by now, you should be able to define those processes and you should be able to give a little information about each one of those processes that were stated in the previous lesson. We are now going to look at the external and internal structure of plants. So the syllabus objective that we are trying to fulfill are these two and they are state the uses, not used, state the uses of plants, sorry for that um, error in the typing, and to describe the external and internal structures of plants. So by the ending of this lesson, you should be able to complete these two tasks or, or fulfill these two objectives. The uses of plants. Plants have numerous benefits, numerous uses. So we're gonna only touch on about five of them. So one of the main use of plants, obviously, is to provide food. Pretty straightforward there. Also, plants are used for feed fiber. Parts of plants that are not consumed by humans can be used to feed livestock. And even parts of plants that are used for, to feed humans can be used to feed livestock. An example here is corn. We consume corn, and the corn can be crushed and fed to livestock. Fuel. Parts of plants can be used to provide fuel. Perhaps the most basic type of fuel that we can have is wood. Persons can use wood, burn wood to have heat and the heat can be used for cooking. However, a little more, um, more of a technical type of fuel, more higher level, um, a different type of fuel that you can have would be biofuel. Here's where corn can be processed into things such as ethanol and the ethanol can be added to gasoline in vehicles and be used as a source of fuel. And the ethanol can be used for many other purposes, including um, alcoholic beverages, and also it can be used in medicine. Sugarcane can also be processed into biofuel. Sugarcane can be used to make ethanol. Medicine, most of our drugs are a large number of drugs that we have on our market. The parts of it, were derived from plants. And some of them are totally from plants. Ornamentals. Plants are also used for decorative purposes. When we have certain events, uh, parties, um, weddings, and so forth, we see that people would use plants to decorate the surrounding. They're also used in botanical gardens. So these are some uses of plants, and you can perhaps name a lot of more different uses that we have for plants. So we're now gonna look at the basics of the classification of plants. So plants, we can have, we can um, branch them into non-flowering plants and we can have flowering plants. Obviously the term non-flowering means that the plant does not bear any flower and flowering plants, they will bear flowers. So our main concern at CSEC level agriculture science would be the flowering plants. And of these flowering plants, we can also divide the flowering plants into two groups. Those are the monocots or monocotyledons, which would be the correct pronunciation for it, and dicotyledons. So we are now gonna base, um, quickly look at the difference between monocots and dicots. For the monocots, the seed have one cotyledon, meaning one seed leaf. And as you can see the diagram, as the monocot germinates, you're only going to see one seed leaf and it has an embryo. Whereas the seeds in dicots would have two cotyledons. And again, look at the diagram and you would see the two cotyledons. Monocots, they basically have fibrous root system as seen in the diagram there. And the dicots, they have taproot system. As for the stem, the arrangement of the vascular bundle, and we will look at the vas vascular bundle shortly. The vascular bundle consists of the xylem and the phloem, and the xylem and phloem transport 
um, as I said, translocate manufactured food and transport um, water. So in monocots, the stems are, are scattered with vascular bundle. And you can look at the diagram on the right. The vascular bundle is scattered throughout the stem. However, in the dicots, you would find that the stem, in the stem, there's a cylindrical or a circular arrangement of the vascular bundle. Another important difference is that, um, and this, this is one that you should be familiar with, is that you have long, thin leaves with parallel veins in monocots, and whereas you normally have round or broader leaves with net vein arrangement of leaves. Another way in which you can tell the difference between monocots and dicots is that the flower parts, the flower, the petals, they appear in trees. And the other parts as mentioned there as well, whereas the flower parts in um, dicots, they're more numerous. For example, the petals may appear in fours and fives. You may have four petals or five petals and so forth as mentioned there. And there's some other differences and you should be able to name um, some examples of these monocots and dicots. So in this slide, we're looking at the external structure of flowering plants. So the flowering plants have two main parts. The above part, the above section, we refer to that as the shoot system. And the section below, that is referred to as the root system. And the root system mainly provides anchorage. It allows the plant to anchor down onto its substrate, um, anchor down onto the soil, and takes up, takes up water, and it also allows the uptake of minerals. So in the shoot structure, we have the flower, and the flower contains the reproductive parts we have the leaves and the leaves are very important for photosynthesis to absorb light for photosynthesis, also to take in carbon dioxide and to give off the gases that are in excess. And it's because of those leaves that we have so much of oxygen present in the water, in our atmosphere. And then we have the stem. The stem supports the leaves, it supports the other structures, and also it provides a pathway to allow the transport of water and minerals. So the water and minerals come from the root and they are transported um, through the stem to the leaves because they are mostly needed in the leaves where photosynthesis would occur. And a lot of other chemical processes are also occurring in the leaves. I want, want to also point out the, the bud. There's a bud there and that location is referred to as a node where you find that bud. And that bud um, can develop into a flower or it could develop into another branch. It all depends on an environmental condition uh, that the plant is exposed to. And uh, here's another diagram that contains or shows more of the different structures in the shoot and the root. But I want to point out here that we have um, two things here that you should be familiar with, node and internode. So node is really referring to where the leaf attached to the stem, an internode is between two nodes. So the internode is between where one leaf is attached to the stem to where another leaf is attached to the stem. So that's the difference between node and internode. Good, so we're now gonna look at roots. We're gonna look at the functions of it and we're going to look at the internal structure of the root. So, this should not be something that is difficult for you to um, provide so the information. You should not be having difficulty to provide this information. So the root, the function would be to provide anchorage, allow the plant to anchor firmly onto the soil, absorbs water, and they also absorb minerals. The minerals usually um, are dissolved in the water. So as the water is taken up, the minerals move along with the water and also other nutrients that are absorbed. Um, and they also store food. There's some roots that are adapted specially to store food. For example, carrot. Carrot is a plant and the root is adapted to store a lot of food. So there are different types of fruit. There are four main types of root. And first we have the tap root here. And this consists of a main root. So the main root, you have the main root at the center. And coming out of the main root, the branches that you see there, those are the lateral roots. Then we have the fibrous root. So you have a cluster of roots and these roots form from the base of the plant. So you do not have one main root, 
and then you we, and you have secondary root and tertiary root and so forth. Secondary and tertiary root are the lateral roots that you have in the tap root that would not be present in fibrous root system. So coconut, for example, is, is a good coconut is a good example of fibrous root. Then we have adventitious roots. So the adventitious groups grow from the base of stem cuttings. So you may have a stem, and from that stem, at the base of it, the root is formed. For example, cotton. Or another example of adventitious roots is biophyllum. And what is this? This is what you know as leaf of life. So from the leaf, you have roots forming, and you have a new, new plants developing. And we also have aerial roots. Here, the roots would grow above the ground. And in the image that you can see at the bottom right, we have mangroves. And one of the reasons for the roots being like this is that the roots can um, absorb carbon dioxide. They have pores that will allow them to absorb gases from the atmosphere. So now we're now going to have a look at the internal structures of roots. So you have a diagram here. Um, you should practice drawing this diagram and you should be able to label the parts that you see on this image. I should also mention that this image was taken from um, agriculture science for CSEC examinations, a Macmillan production, Macmillan ed um, a publication, uh, the second edition of the book. So first we have the epidermis. It is a single layer of cell, so it's a thin layer of cell. And the purpose of it is to protect the roots. What is not mentioned or what is not shown on this diagram is the outgrowths. Um, on the epidermis, you have outgrowths, and those are called root hairs. So the root hairs will go out from the epidermis, and the purpose of the root hairs will be to absorb water and minerals. Next, we have the cortex. The cortex are unspecialized cells. Unspecialized mean that they are not carrying out a single function, a single particular function. For example, the xylem, that's a specialized cell. And the function of the xylem is to transport water. But the cortex is not as specialized. They're unspecialized. And they have to transport water and minerals to the vascular tissue. So the water will come in from the root here. It will go through the epidermis layer and it will pass through the cortex. And it will then pass through the endodermis. And the endodermis is a layer of cell which separate the cortex from the vascular tissues that are at the middle layer. And then we have the vascular tissues, or you may refer to them as a vascular bundle. And the vascular bundle involves or includes the xylem and the phloem. And they are labeled on the diagram. So the xylem, they transport water and dissolve um, um, sub minerals. And the phloem, they transport manufactured food. And we have another layer of cell called the pericycle. And the purpose of them are to produce more vascular tissues. So again, you should be able to draw and label the diagram that you can see here on the left. And you should understand the function of those parts that are mentioned here. Importantly, um, the arrangement that you see here, they are also similar in young monocot, or monocot leadenous roots. So the monocotyledonous roots and the dicotyledonous roots, the arrangements would be similar when you look at the internal structure. And you should be able to identify the structure as well. It's, um, well, I, we say that it is internal structure, you should know that it is a transverse section. We have two uh, main type of sections that we can take. Sections mean how you cut this, the part of the plant. You can have transverse section and you can have longitudinal section. So to use uh, our body as an example, the transverse section means it's a long way like this. And the longitudinal section, if you're taking a longitudinal section of an organism, it means you're going along like this. Good. So next we're looking at the stem. Monocots have herbaceous stems, uh, meaning that they're not so woody or so um, hard like dicots. We normally get wood from dicotyledonous plants and not monocotyledonous plants. Underground stems, underground stems, these are called rhizomes. An example there would be ginger. 
And the functions of stems would be to support leaves and support flowers and other structures, the fruits and so forth that are attached to it. The stem importantly transport minerals and transport water and they act as storage. An example of a stem that stores food would be sugar cane. Some of them are green, especially the monocots, the stems are green. And when the seedlings are very young, even any um, dicot seedling, if you look at them, you would see that the stem have some green structure around it. And most likely it contains chlorophyll and they undergo photosynthesis. But as the dicot get more mature, well then they lose that ability to undergo photosynthesis. The stem lose that ability. Next, we're looking at the stem structure, the internal structure or the transverse section. So transverse section of the stem, these are the structures here. We have the epidermis again, and the epidermis may have openings or pores. And these pores are gonna allow gas exchange to occur on the stem, especially very young stem. The other type of pores that they have, uh, we call them lenticels. The vascular tissues are arranged around, in a circle around the pit. So we have the pit at the, at the middle, you call that structure the pit, and around it we have the vas vascular tissues. The vascular tissues again would be the xylem and the phloem. We have cambium tissues and the cambium tissues are located between the xylem and the phloem. In, on the diagram, it is represented as vascular cambion. And the purpose of this vascular cambion is to produce more xylem and phloem tissues. All right, moving on, monocot stems, internal structure of the monocot stem. It's quite different from the dicot. When we talk about the root, the dicot and the monocot, the structures, the transverse section, when you look at the transverse section, they're very similar. However, for the monocot, it's quite different. Vascular bundle is scattered throughout the stem, as was mentioned when we compared monocots and dicots. And there's no distinction between the cortex and the pit. So in the previous diagram, you would notice that there's a pit at the middle, but there's no pit, there's no area in the middle. The xylem and phloem are just scattered throughout. So that brings us to the end of today's lesson. This does, not bring us, this does not bring us to the end of internal structures. We still have to look at the leaf. And on a later date, I will be producing another video and update you on the on other, on additional notes on the structure, internal structure of the leaf. As always, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out and ask those questions that are related to what we discuss or even additional information that you would want to gather. All right. So, until the next time, I wish you all the best in your studies. Take care, everyone.